Yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, we are very happy to have you on our first webinar at Carbon Fact. Um, very much excited to share some of our experiences and real cases throughout our all our webinars. And today, um, the touch is more educational and discussing about the experiences as a real brand. Um, we would love to have it as interactive as possible. So I'm inviting everyone, if you have any question, please share it in the Q&A box with us and we will go through that at the end of the uh, presentation. Um, so some housewarming rules, uh, as you can see, uh, you can share um, any comments that you have in the webinar chat. If you have any question, please share it on the Q&A box. I'm going to moderate the, uh, this, this session. I am Bahare Zamani, the head of science at Carbon Fact, and we have invited uh, Marie El Gounini, uh, the production manager at Adormi. Uh, welcome, Marie. Thank you. Hello, Barry. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, OK. Um, so the agenda, we are going to shortly uh, introduce Carbon Fact and Adomi to you. And then uh, we will uh, dive into Adomi's sustainability journey. And then Marie will walk you through of on a, um, discussing how the data-driven results could help with focusing on the carbon reduction strategy. Um, we will have a surprise of uh, a demo of one of our latest feature at Carbon Fact uh, for you, and then we can uh, finalize everything with Q and A. Um, so quickly about Carbon Fact, uh, we are a startup that we started in 2020 in Paris. Uh, we are a carbon management platform with uh, focused on the vertical of the fashion and lifestyle brands. Um, we started with the life cycle assessment on a product level, so we turned the latest LCA methodology, that is the draft of the PEPCR, into software that took us, that, uh, took us around uh, 12 months to build a very granular LCA engine that can have basically the whole LCA on the whole catalog uh, at scale. Uh, of course, the result of the product LCA can be valuable in itself. At the same time, when we have the opportunity to look at it at a scale and on a yearly basis and catalog basis, it can be a part of the scope three in the carbon accounting. We know that the brand, fashion brands are uh, eager to measure their scope one and two and also three, and they would like to know how granular scope three results can help them to set targets and also um, pave the understanding of how uh, they can reach to the targets. So how each of the reduction strategies can help to reduce and get closer to the targets. Um, with that, I will hand over to Marie to please uh, introduce Adomi to us and we will discuss regarding your carbon reduction strategies. Yes, yeah, so a few words about Adormi. So Adormi was funded by CEO Morgan and Maron and it's turning a decade all this year. Um, as of September 2022, Adormi is one of the few lingerie brands in the world to be B Corp certified. And at the beginning of the year, uh, the company has been acquired by VSN Co, the parent company of Victoria's Secret brand. So in a few words, um, the aim at the creation was to become the first lingerie brand to offer extending sizing across a wide range of styles and categories, um, bras, panties, lingerie, sleep, lounge, a swim, active and weighted wear. And we currently provide 77 sizes. Um, so now a bit more about our sustainability journey. Um, for years, we had Adormi has taken significant measures to evaluate the company's energy use, our shipping processes, and from last year, uh, carbon footprint. Um, so we knew that assessing our impact, prioritizing actions with the most significant impact, and acting on key levers 
uh, to reduce our emissions would require a specific expertise. That's why we called on Carbon Fact. And we are partnering together to calculate the carbon footprint of every single product in our catalog. Um, there are three different phases. Um, next slide, please. Um, so there are three different phases within the assessment, data collection, measure, and reduce. So to measure the carbon footprint of every single product in our catalog, uh, as much information as possible are collected to cover the entire life cycle uh, of the product from the production of the raw materials to the product end of life. Um, then we measure our impact uh, to draw the state of play up. Uh, and after completing the data collection and the measure phases, we are able to focus on identifying where and how to reduce our impact in our supply chain. Next slide, please. Um, so we started with the collect phase. Um, so data has been first gathered and consolidated by our tech team from different sourcing, um, depending on all the criteria as we set up with Carbon Fact. And then everything is stored first through BigQuery to Carbon Fact. So we do not manually refresh, we do not upload data, everything is automatically updated from our system to Carbon Fact. And thanks to the OLS system Carbon Fact implemented, as soon as a product is incomplete, uh, because some requested data is missing, or some are suspicious, a wait, for example, we are notified to check and to complete the product. Um, so to add something from the carbon fact side, we know that uh, in the classic LCA work, uh, the data collection is a very exhaustive and time consuming task to do. And we would uh, encourage the brands to start from somewhere. That means first looking for all the available data that are lying around in different departments. And for that and making it more pragmatic of what data points to collect next, we already implemented a parameter that we call it uncertainty. The uncertainty parameter is helping to understand how much being uncertain about the data point can affect the overall results. So how sensitive the results are towards that uncertainty. And then how would be the next pragmatic um, step and data point to look into and look after and trying to close that gap for the uncertainty. Um, the reason that we believe that we should tackle data collection in a very pragmatic way is, for example, there are gonna be new legislations uh, such as PEPCR that the draft is um, still ongoing and under work that requires at least 12 different data points for each product to be able to call it a PEPCR compliant uh, study and being able to communicate it towards the consuming um, facing purposes. So um, it is important to have the underlying foundation already from now and start to gather as much data possible and understand where to focus next. So identifying the different hotspot, identifying where the uncertainty is, is one of the tasks that we tackle at the collection phase. Yeah, indeed the list of data points being very time consuming, complex to reach out for brands, uh, for manufacturers, for suppliers. Uh, we decided to do a pilot and three different products uh, from our catalog, a bra, a swim, and a baby doll. And from this pilot, we can now focus on most cool event information, main product attributes, which have the biggest impact on their uncertainty to prioritize them and reduce the uncertainty in the most efficient way. And since the platform is dynamic, we can see the results of every real time data we are collecting. So in case tomorrow data became available, we just can feed the system to have a finer calculation in real time. Um, so the product, the project is progressing at our pace. The more we advance in the project, the less we rely on proxies. So that's actually great. And after the collect phase, we are able to measure. Uh, so thanks to the platform, we can evaluate our carbon footprint, uh, not only on product level, but also see the evolution and look at the distribution of our emissions by product category. So by bra, by swim, by sleep, and by manufacturer, and by raw material type, by polyester, by cotton, by viscose. 
uh, with a yearly overview. And uh, of course, uh, we believe like everyone else, what cannot be measured cannot be managed. So after passing the part of the data collection and the measurement, it is very important to um, unlock the decision making and target setting which, uh, with some data driven results. So the next step is to build up the strategy. And that requires a lot of different analysis on different basis. What are the main suppliers that are contributing to um, such uh, hotspots or the, the biggest part of the yearly carbon footprint? Uh, what type of the material it is that the whole catalog is built upon and are the main contributors? And that can be seen on um, in different formats on the platform and that could help Marie and uh, her team to uh, work on the different strategies. So um, the next uh, would be uh, building up the strategy. And Marie, I am very curious, and I think everyone else is very curious to understand, how did you use the data on your daily basis and build up the short-term projects uh, and communicate it with different teams? Um, so a good example is the simulator we call Develop with Carbon Facts. So this is a project level simulator. Uh, we are perfectly aware that our efforts must be mainly oriented around our materials. Uh, we found that 80% of the carbon impact of one product comes from the material production, 80%, so that's a lot. Um, we need to improve our existing material mix and find less carbon intensive alternatives. So. This simulator instantly calculates the carbon footprint of a product. Um, there are two internal uses at Adomi. Uh, for the newness, designers can use it to explore how the choices made during the design stage affect the carbon footprint of the product, how to optimize it uh, by, for example, changing a bit the composition, lighten the product. Um, and the other uh, use is the, um, it's for existing products. Uh, so production team can use it, identify, focus on the products we need to improve in terms of carbon impact. So basically continual improvement of our best sellers. And another thing is that now, thanks to that simulator, we can also use it um, to integrate the carbon argument in the manufacturer allocation decision when we decide to give this product to this manufacturer, this product to this one. Uh, we can use now the carbon argument. Um, when, for example, uh, um, a case is like when different manufacturers are vying for a new product at equivalent cost, we can compare different scenarios. So here, um, it's an example with figurative data. Uh, we have on the scenario number one, we give the product to a Chinese manufacturer with conventional polyester. In the scenario two, we keep the same Chinese manufacturer, but with a recycled polyester. And in the case number three, we use a recycled polyester with a manufacturer from Vietnam. And we can see that um, between both, we between scenario one and scenario three, we save 20% uh, carbon on average per unit. So that's really useful for design and production teams. Um, we also have other internal tools. Uh, so for example, uh, AIM, which is Adormi Impact Metrics. Uh, AIM is an internal tool created by Adormi design team a few years ago. Um, it's a tool to assess the environmental sustainability of a product based on its design and certain manufacturing attributes. Um, there are four key uh, impact areas, fiber, water, waste, and chemical. So for example, for fiber, we allocate uh, more points to, for the use of recycled, organic certified fibers than conventional and virgin. Uh, using a digital print, uh, which requires less water than screen print will earn a highest call in the water section. Same for the use of a dead stock at um, factory material in the waste area. Uh, for chemical, we will add the use of water-based glue uh, Ecotech certification. So every single product is scored. And we are currently working with CarbonFact to correlate both HAME and CarbonFact to evaluate all the attributes uh, taking into account by AIM and to be able to combine both.
Okay, interesting, Marie. Um, so what you have discussed was more uh, on a daily basis and the decisions <clears throat> that you are making together with the design and product development team. Um, we are also um, interested and curious to know how would you use such results uh, basically for the long-term perspective and the engagement of the suppliers? We know, for example, the results show, and it's not surprising, it's the same with um, most of the fashion brands and their scope three, that uh, around roughly 54% of the whole scope three and the emissions in the value chain are lying in tier two. So what do you have in the pipeline and what type of projects you are you have initiated to work on? Uh, so we have B annual meetings about all our sourcing strategies with different involved teams, production teams, sourcing, purchasing, supply chain and design. And one of our strategies to explore vertical factories. So vertical factories is when the fabric formation, so knitting, weaving, the printing, the dyeing, and the assembling is done, is done by the same stakeholder. So that's easier for us to understand and maximize the energy efficiency uh, by, for instance, transitioning from coal to biomass or natural gas, to explore renewable energy, uh, find better alternatives for heat, uh, for instance, to maintain heat traps and systems, to recover heat from hot and so on. So this is one of our strategy. Another one is to promote the local sourcing uh, with our manufacturers. We know that all the raw materials currently comes from China, but we really would like to promote local sourcing, for example, with special Vietnam, where we know that they are actually a, a lot of uh, potential. So um, even if we know that the transportation is minimal, uh, beside the fact that the lead time will be better, we lower, we lower, we lower, sorry, the transportation impact. So that's interesting to see that there are secondary levers to activate, uh, actually other than just raw materials. Okay, and um, another angle is looking into basically innovative processes and uh, different alternatives in terms of materials and the production, for example, finishing processes or uh, in the wet treatment side. And we know that it um, basically wet treatment is requires a lot of energy and heat and maybe um, you can explore for better alternatives there. So um, do you work on any initiative in the R&D side and uh, looking into different alternatives and projects there? Yeah, we currently look into different process alternatives. So one example is dyeing. Uh, today, industrial dyeing consumes a lot of water, a lot of chemicals derived from uh, petroleum. So we are in R&D phase with a natural dye alternative. Uh, so this is also the opportunity for us to collect primary data from at the supplier level and simulate the results thanks to the simulator to compare the impact of a natural dye versus a chemical one. Yeah, and I, th I want to add that this gives the opportunity when we have the platform live, every time that we get a new data point, a new process that can be fed into the model and you can in basically um, quickly and with no um, uh, basically time lag, see how the results would affect uh, the product level and also your catalog level. Um, so Marie, what is the next? What is the future plan with uh, basically the carbon analysis results? Um, in terms of business, being able to simulate an industrial change is essential for a brand and not only on product level, but also on catalog level. So we really like the idea of simulating a decision before activating it. And we are working with Carmen Pan currently on another simulator. So we, we explained a bit about the product level simulator, but we are also working on another simulator at collection level to simulate, for example, the impact of moving a whole group of products from a manufacturer in China to a manufacturer in Vietnam or in a manufacturer to Turkey. Um, the impact uh, if tomorrow's as factories start using renewable energy, uh, the impact if we change 100% of our virgin polyester by a recycled polyester. So 
it will be a really good balance between both simulators, products, and collection uh, to build clear roadmaps uh, that everyone at the company will be able to follow. Great. And I think uh, we actually get this feedback more and more uh, from the customers and the fashion industry that how to develop different models and uh, basically keep the track towards the carbon trajectory. And uh, for that, we have developed a feature that can cover that demand. Of course, um, it would be much better that we would have Martin here, but he couldn't join the webinar. And um, we have a demo that he provided for us. So I would like to invite you all for a few minutes. Uh, we go through the demo uh, on our platform. Hi there, Martin from Carbon Facts. Uh, excited today to demo the new modeling tool. As a reminder, you, you were so far able to collect, um, to, to simulate change uh, on your Carbon Facts platform at the product level, right? So this is a demo account where I have here all my products that are connected. Each product have an associated footprint and I have my different materials that are listed here. Now, what I'm gonna show you here is um, you know, how you can model some changes that could be at the product level and see what will be the impact at the corporate or the company um, you know, level. So I'm gonna go here and click new model and I'm prompted with a few options. The first one is I can model a change of materials. I can also model a component weight change, a transport method, and a change in the renewable share of my tier one supplier. I'm gonna go ahead and pick change of material. I'm pointing with my list of different materials and I'm gonna pick polyester China, right? So polyester China here is, uh, you know, one kilogram of polyester China is about 30 kilograms of CO2 equivalent. And then what I can do is I can update that material. So what if I was, I was adding a new type of polyester, maybe one of the polyester, uh, you know, made in France, why not? Uh, and I'm gonna switch to, and that matter is the composites, right? So it's it's now made of 20% polyester China and 80% polyester recycling threads. Now, the new footprints, the new emission factor for that material is 10 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram. So I'm gonna click next. And here I'm prompted with all the products that contain my polyester China I picked at the beginning. So I have 16 products that I'm, that I'm, that I'm, that I'm um, you know, proposed here. And I can select, right? Select or deselect some of them. All right, I'm happy. And then I can go, and uh, see the simulation results. That page is giving me an overview of what will be the impact of that um, um, you know, emission factor change of that new material in my catalog on my entire uh, unit different um, product. So let me, show, let me show you how it works. Uh, the first one is the emission factor change, right? So we are moving from, a, we are dividing by three the emission factor of my uh, material. So moving from 30 to 10, and as a result, my footprint, my average footprint weighted by quantity of product I'm buying is moving from 13 to 12, this is rounded. So that's a minus 0.65 kilogram CO2 equivalent drop in the average per unit um, um, you know, footprint. I also see here the total footprint change. So I used to be at 7,000 and I'm now at 6, uh, you know, 1,600. So minus 364 tons of CO2. And then I'm prompted with a breakdown, so a baseline versus a model version, broken down by the different stage. And you can see here that the material is the one explaining the drop. I'm also seeing here the same the table at the product level where I can see the impact between you know material and a different step. So you see here, for instance, that the first one, I used to have a footprint of 22 and so moving to 11 because of that material change and the new footprint is now 14, right? So I can see quickly what's the impact and I can also see, I can toggle and see what will be the impact at the overall, at the overall level, right? That product used to be 229 and is now 131. So a call, call reduction. Now, what I can do is I can actually save those results, um, uh, polyester to polyester um, um, friends, and I can save the simulation. Now you see here, it's been added to my list of simulation uh, that I'm doing here. I can uh, yeah, so... Um we can, of course, send uh, the rest of the demo for you. It was more a quick show of understanding that how we can apply such scenarios and different analysis on the catalog level. And also uh, you can keep the track. How would that help with your year on year? If you are having any target setting such as SBTI, um, how can you keep the track of that um, uh, to get to your year on year targets that are set? Um, so, of course, um, 
Marie, thank you so much for uh, being here and uh, accompanying me for showing how Carbon Fact could help and how basically the carbon management tools can help to use the uh, data and the results for making the sustainability strategy and decisions. I would like to invite you all to uh, share your questions. We already have a couple of questions here in the question box. So please feel free to, uh, to join and uh, share your questions. And uh, we make sure that we can cover all. Of course, if we can't, uh, uh, we will get in touch with you and provide more answers. Um, so basically what I can see, there are a couple of questions regarding the methodology. Uh, what is the underlying methodology? Um, the carbon is the carbon calculation based on ISO. Is it based on PFCR or um, how is it in relation to the carbon accounting, the uh, greenhouse gas protocol? Um, it starts actually um, based on the PFCR draft, but it is not finalized, and there are a lot of similarities between PFCR and ISO fourteen o sixty seven. So the model is ISO compatible on a product level. The same result can be used uh, and encouraged by the greenhouse gas protocol when uh, the brands want to look into their scope three. Um, the most common practices when it comes to scope three is usually the spend base. So this is a more bottom to top approach when we can have a look at all your catalog you can also apply the results for your scope three. So it is compatible with the greenhouse gas protocols. Um, then the next question was, can carbon fact track other environmental impact categories or just it's the global warming potential? Of course, initially when we started and you can see, uh, get that from carbon fact name uh, that we started with, uh, empowering carbon management and carbon accounting and carbon footprinting for the product. Um, but we know that for the PFCR, it is not only about carbon, but the 15 other environmental indicators. So we are moving towards that and we are having an eye on the development of the methodology, but at the same time, now we have integrated two major other um, uh, environmental indicators, the water and the eutrophication that can be really, uh, that soon is released on our platform. Um, Marie, the next question is for you, I think. So if I summarize that, what are the data entry points in the big query? Um, is this uh, um, such as the data in PLM? Uh, does it include the BOM and cert certification? And then the other question is about the validation of the data. So um, any reflection on that? Um, so, so we mentioned a bit the pilot test. So thanks to the pilot test, we focused on uh, the most relevant information uh, for uh, the product. And we realized that the main data to collect is like the weight of the product for sure, the composition, uh, the consumption of each component, um, the country of origin of the product, but also of each component, um, the yarn size in Ditex or Dimi, and the fabric type, is it knitted or woven, and the GSM. Um, yes, and to add on that, this is uh, basically the starting point, as we mentioned that we want to tackle the data collection in a pragmatic way, so we know <clears throat> Sorry for that. And not all the brands uh, have everything uh, documented in their PLM system and BigQuery, and it requires a lot of work back and forth between different departments. So um, there is a list of the minimum data um, that we start with, um, such as the bomb, the um, weight of the products. But at the same time, we know that we don't have access to all of that. And uh, the, in Carbon Fact, the um, data analyst team are building up heuristics based on the uh, using different methodology and ML and the um, catalogs that we have looked into and the standards. And we start with these heuristics. And then uh, basically, as I mentioned, defining the uncertainty helps us to understand what is the next data point that needs to be and required to be collected. 
And um, till then, the results are based on the heuristics and it is very clear on the platform. So when you are um, looking product by product, you can see what are based on the primary data and what are based on the heuristics and the assumptions. Um, and a very good question following that is, the, does the platform allow the verified primary data for suppliers or does it rely on global averages and LCA databases? Um, the ultimate goal is actually to get to the primary data of the suppliers. And we know that in a first run, it is not possible for the brands, um, especially when it is in a, down the road in a tier two, tier three to um, collect data. Um, with some of the um, uh, customers, we um, could collect the data in terms of the energy and the type of the energy in uh, tier zero in assembly. And it is already integrated, so it is not solely uh, based on the averages and LCA databases. Uh, we start with the LCA databases when the data is not available. It gives a good picture of where hotspots are, where data should be collected, which supplier is having the main impact. So um, digging into that supplier um, uh, energy bills and understanding the type of the energy that they have. Um, okay, another question, Marie, that I can see is um, how Adormi designers and engineers integrate carbon data from the initial stages of the design? Um, so there are different uses. Uh, we use the simulator represented um, to designers can, can just play with it and and explore how the design uh, choices uh, have has a, an influence on the on the result. But we also have internally a fabric library uh, with all the fabric we will like in terms of design, in terms of end feel, in terms of price, in terms of feeling. And we closely work with Carbon Fact to evaluate the carbon footprint of each of these materials to now take into account the carbon result. So. Even if tomorrow, maybe we will like uh, a fabric, we'll uh, just um, realize that the carbon result is really bad. So we are going to start stopping working with that fiber. Um, and we also have uh, meetings when we allocate uh, products to manufacturers. And we also use the carbon uh, result when uh, we have a product. We did a cost exercise for a product with different manufacturers. We receive different prices, we receive different offers. And now we, are, we can also use the simulator to calculate the carbon footprint result for each uh, case. And then it helps in the, in the decision. Thank you. Um, another question I can see is, the cal is the calculation on style level or collection level? Uh, or between the different product groups, because the change of material can reduce the footprint, but um, if there are other SKUs using the same material, the sum can be beneficial. So at um, Carbon Fact, uh, the assessment is on SKU level, uh, and uh, uh, this is exactly what we also believe, that the analysis should be at every level, not only the product group, but also a SKU and how is the sum of the SKU and how the change of material or moving to different uh, processes uh, would affect uh, basically the overall catalog. Um, do you have something to add here, Marie? No, no, 100% agree, yeah. Okay. Um, the other question is more for the uh, basically uh, future plans and uh, how did you find it uh, when start the communication with supplier, both in terms of energy use uh, and data collection and how difficult it is? So at first we had the chance to have a partner, really good partnership with our manufacturers. Uh, during the biannual sourcing meeting I mentioned, we really work to be sure that we can wheel our on our existing manufacturer panel. So in terms of transparency and communication, we have really good relationship with our partner, with our partners. Uh, but for sure, uh, the more we advance in the project, the more we need to dig into all uh, the information. 
And um, we started with our key vendors uh, to focus on the products who have the most impact on the uncertainty. Uh, and we also um, modify a bit our bill of materials. So the bill of material for our products is like the list of all the components with a lot of information. We start asking more and more questions through this uh, bill of material to uh, complete a bit more the calculation to have a finer calculation with, uh, with carbon fat and to integrate the more data we can, the, 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 it's, it's better if we, for example, if we focus on the energy, if we focus on the raw material origins, uh, if we focus on the electricity consumption, heat consumption. So that's why we really work on the bill of material to integrate uh, as much information as possible. Yeah, great. Um, we know that it's a start uh, when it comes to engaging the suppliers. Yeah. So um, we hope that the results on the platform can also help you uh, focus on the most relevant uh, suppliers in terms of um, helping them with the energy alternatives and understanding better of the um, energy reduction and efficiency. Um, with that, um, I would like to thank everyone for joining us in uh, our webinar. Uh, we are more than happy to get your feedback. If you have any questions, please uh, uh, do not hesitate to get in touch with me or with Marie. And um, um, we will have the we have the webinar recorded, so we are going to share. Uh, that with you if you want to share it internally with your um, other team members. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much, Marie, and I'm wishing a great evening for everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Barry.